shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget. I call to all the nurses and sisters and the carers and war veterans home today. Now, of course, the, uh, the uh, mounted police contingent and uh, head today by the first ever female uh, commander of the uh, troop, Kirsty McFadden, and she's riding her troop, Bodie. Well turned out, as they always are, popular at all our ceremonies and marches here in Australia in 1957. And, of course, our march leader, uh, Her Excellency Professor Maria Bashir, the Governor of New uh, and uh, proud Governor of New South Wales, she is. And immediately behind uh, uh, the Her Excellency the Governor is the March Commander, Major General Mark Kelly, Land Commander, Australia, a man of some distinction, graduating from uh, Duntroon, uh, Royal Military Co Dun College Duntroon, with the Sword of Honour, and allocated the Royal Australian Infantry Corps. Has Australia, and of course, Where's this uh, branch, the New South Wales branch of the RSL, uh, are in fact the organisers of this march. It's a complex job, and uh, and there's Don Williams and uh, uh, our Mr. Don Rowe, our president of the branch of the RSL, and with him Chris Perrin, the state secretary, an ex-member of the RSL. And all the state councillors, they're all here to be seen on this day. And of course, our memorial horses, they're moving fairly quickly as we go through today, World War troops. And now, in memory of the World War I troops, the Australian flag party with World War I memorial standards are there. And let's go on today, who can't uh, unfortunately march, but pleased to see them on parade. And of course, a splendid sight of the New South Wales police force, their band. Uh, and read, led by Superintendent Terry Walton. Now, and the police contingent led, as I mentioned, by Terry Dalton, Superintendent Derry, uh, Terry Dalton. And this contingent is made up of uh, officers who've served in the military and indeed in United Nations uh, forces. They're in three groups today. There are those current serving members in uniform, members uh, in plain clothes, uh, a uh, branch of the police force marching and such and of course ex-members of the police force proudly marching with the police today and many of the blue berets you see there are in fact that leads us into the leading elements of the navy over to Ian. Yes, the march, uh, the naval section march is led this morning by Rear Admiral Guy Griffiths who joined the RN in 37 uh, yes, he served in uh, a very important ship, another heavy cruiser that fought uh, in the Second World War. Uh, flagship for most of her time in the service. There's that with us now. Interestingly, he served as advisor to the first chief of naval staff in the Malaysian Navy. HMAS uh, Australia was most hit by five kamikazes, but we stood them all. They're followed by uh, members of the contingent from the HMAS Canberra at Shropshire Association. Canberra was a sister ship of Australia. Uh, she was commissioned in 1928. She served in the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean, where she sank some German supply ships. Uh, she also worked in the Red Sea, uh, where she fought at the Battle uh, of Surigao Strait, an interesting time when she was actually face to face with the Japanese battleship and inflicted damage on it. Just saw the banner for Canberra, Ian. Yes, Canberra, as I mentioned earlier, was lost at the Battle of Savo Island. A, a big ally. Napier, Nice and Nestor, Norman and Nepal uh, fought uh, across the, the battle theatres of the Second World War, particularly in the Mediterranean where uh, Nestor was lost, but also
longer have RANs, and we had two sets of RANs. This is RANs 1. These are the world locations, and also they were in the code breaking area. Very important contribution made by them there. We are now moving into uh, uh, other contingents of World War II, and there we have Major General Sandy Pearson leading the World War II contingent. Now, Sandy, very prominent rugby player in his day, missed out on Wallaby selection because they declared war in 1939. Sandy Pearson today is leading the second AIF and leading the headquarters of the Corps, of the first Australian Corps. This, of course, is the headquarters which commanded the divisions which were sent to the Middle East. Uh, the 6th, the 7th and the 9th Division. And the band that of the 1st, 15th Royal New South Wales Lancers. Now behind them we have the 1st of the Armoured Regiments, the 1st Armoured Regiment. You can see on its battle honours in 1st, 1st fought in South Africa and later in uh, New Guinea. They're marching under the blue and white banner. It uh, used Matilda tanks for the first time in the, the jungle warfares uh, with some success. Probably worth mentioning part-time units in the uh, uh, police force of New South Wales, but like their uh, military or concert band, is always in demand, always well turned out and always popular. In Italy, and they were the first overseas unit of the Empire Training Scheme and operated Hurricanes and Kitty Hawks. Just saw them very, very proudly behind their squadron banner. It's a bit difficult, there's uh, 31 squadron now, bow fighters, but these units are moving out of uh, what we expect as an order. Makes it... ...of Nepal. There is the uh, Royal Hong Kong Regiment, uh, led today by Warrant Officer Patrick Chung, who was a Corps Sergeant Major before the uh, regiment disbanded in 1995, the disbandment, but of course, uh, because of the... Um, uh,